Hey guys, what's Bomb TV? This is going to be reacting with Pastor Young. Guys, today we're going to be reacting to the tone of Allah mind blowing, guys. I needed some understanding about this and I'm not going to really deliberate on the seven heaven on this video, guys. Guys, let's get straight into this. نفس إن لم تغفري لا تدعي All the praise is for Allah who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation while he is also the all compelling He is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him. It is he who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets alayhum salam with the common message of strict monotheism which simply means that there's absolutely no one worthy of worship no one worthy of our obedience except the almighty the one the absolute and who has no partners the earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent Those messages we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them, their names are now lost. We just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ I've sent to every nation a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. This essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because the message was different, because it was the same message, but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so therefore that message now had to be protected it had to be preserved in a way none of the earlier messages were preserved i will tell you this what you say you have come to know 40 years back and what you call the big bang is already mentioned in the book which I read, the glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, 
do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda kana tarat kan fatna huma the heaven and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder what you're talking about the big bang i try to imagine compressing a spring i push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller and i've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring and when i let it go it bursts out it bursts out it bursts out the creation of the universe which you came to know 40 years back is already mentioned in this book the glorious quran 1400 years ago who could have mentioned that in the quran so they this will say maybe someone wrote maybe it's a fluke maybe it's a guesswork a human being regardless of who they are or where they are or what they do will have this curiosity they'll want to know why am i here how did i get here and do i have a purpose and if so what is it the only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the creator himself if there is a creator it would be up to him to tell us why we were created and what he expects from us and what this life is really about Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now has shown the people what he wants from them and it's a very simple thing and that is that worship be for him alone without any partners in fact we know this life to be a test from almighty god that's why we're born and that's why we die because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on the next life after this life no one will ever die again a bad person or a good person both are brought back and they continue to live in the next life either in good shape or not so good shape depending on how they did on the test the worship of the god of abraham that was what was taught by these prophets the lord of the arsh and kursi we're talking about the lord of the worlds alhamdulillah rabbil alamin we're talking about the lord of the entire universe and beyond the entire universe and beyond you know we live in this dunya and we are fascinated with this dunya which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created in a beautiful manner we're fascinated there are over billions of people which live on this dunya at this moment in time over six billion people that live on the dunya at this moment in time this dunya of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that there is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions or more people but what is this dunya in comparison to what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created out there this dunya is insignificant this dunya is meaningless to allah it means nothing, it is worthless. So worthless, compare it with the sun. The sun is one star. You know more science than me. You'll be able to tell me better. Take this planet Earth and you place it inside the sun and you will be able to place 1.3 million Earths in the sun. 1.3 million Earths in the sun. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The sun is one star, one star. There are stars out there which are millions of times bigger than the sun. You need, you tell me this, that you need millions and millions of stars to make one galaxy. And then you tell me this, that there are zillions of galaxies out there. Let me tell you on top of this, my friend. After this, whatever you see above, whatever you see above, when you raise your head and you look above, whatever you see above, the zillions and zillions and zillions of galaxies, let me tell you, this is everything there is within the first heaven. Everything there is within the first heaven and Allah is the creator of seven heavens seven heavens and the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is 500 years you know the distance that can be covered in 500 years at what speed only allah knows only allah knows but it will take 500 years to get from the first heaven to the second heaven 
500 years from the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. Every time it will take 500 years. After the seven heavens, Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard. You all read the Ayatul Kursi. You all know the Ayatul Kursi. After this, you have the Kursi of Allah. You have the chair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know these seven heavens that we've just talked about. In comparison to the Kursi of Allah, they're non existent. They're meaningless. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has given an example in a hadith. Just to. Give us a little bit of understanding with regards to the seven heavens in comparison to the kursi of Allah. Take a ring from your finger, take it off, the small ring that you have, and place it, let's say, in a desert, the Sahara Desert. It's the biggest desert in the world. You know that ring that we take off from our fingers and place it in the Sahara Desert? What, what comparison is in between the ring and the Sahara Desert? Nothing. Nothing. The seven heavens is the ring and the kursi of Allah is the Sahara Desert. After the kursi of Allah, you have the arsh of Allah. You have the arsh of Allah. Again, Rasulullah has given, has explained, so just so that we can understand. Take the ring, place it in the desert. This time, the ring is the kursi and the arsh is the desert. What is the kursi in comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends, then you have the Lord of the arsh and kursi. He is beyond the size of Allah. Who Allah is, what Allah is. The greatness of Allah is beyond the comprehension of my little mind. This is the being that you and I are messing with. Think about this. Okay. First, we need to understand. They call it seventh heaven. Okay. But before I trash that, let me talk about the Big Bang. You know, uh, as I was uh, uh, saying before, some persons just come up with some ideology and they start bringing some things. You sometimes you start wondering: Are these people are they human? There are some inhuman, irrational stuff. Some person will just bring adults. Sometimes you'll be thinking, is this person normal? And this person will, will be proving whatever sounds abnormal. He will, he, will, he will be defending it as if he know what he's doing. This being bad, a big bang of a thing, what they call themselves. I'm not against anybody. Um, it's their own belief. Everybody is entitled to his own belief. Yeah. But he, you, are, you are talking about um, the world just came out from nowhere. And like somebody's crushed the world and then life just emanates. Who is the, the being that crushed some particles together? Is that what the 80s believe in? Yes. They, they should try to tell us who, who then crushed those stuff together and he exploded and life came out from nowhere. Who, who is the force? There should, there should be the force behind it. Now, what prepared the force to do such thing? So before you start concluding on some things, you should, you should actually take some, some realistic thinking. Not, not just thinking like that that will suit you to make some persons uh, deviate from what they are doing. No. But on the other hand, Christianity is not a religion. I always say so. Christianity is never a religion. Christianity, uh, the, the, the religion aspect of Christianity um, is the ignorant part. 
Jesus never said, I've come to give you religion. Yeah. He said, I've come to give you life. What's life? Your culture. Christianity is the way of life. So, back to the seventh heaven of the thing. The first question you will ask, where are you calculating the heavens from? Is it from earth you are counting one, two, three, four, to seven? Or you are from the sky counting below? I that think he was counting from the earth. From the earth. So the seven is above. What about the heavens behind or beneath the earth? Is not part of it? Because we know there's um, heavens above, there's heavens of the earth, and that of hell. There's, a, there's, there's another life beneath the, the earth. If you read in Revelation chapter 21, if I'm not mistaken, from verse 12, he said, And John cried, Who can open the book? So there was none found in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. I can see there are, are, are beings in the heaven, there are beings on earth, and there are beings behind, beneath the earth. If you are counting from the earth, according to their belief, the seventh is the highest. But can I tell you, God does not stay in heaven. Mm. God does not stay in heaven. You can't prove it to me. Go and check the new covenant. After Jesus resurrected, Bible said he went far above all the heavens. Where is the place called all the heavens? It was not specified. All we know that Jesus is above all the heavens. The third heaven is a realm where um, only the Spirit of God can take you there. Only because the distance, your spirit can't fly that distance. Despite the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven, your spirit can attain. But the highest your spirit can go to, always it will it will just evaporate in the second heaven. And the second heaven, that's where we have a lot of demons, a lot of principalities. Not really demons, we have principalities, um, um uh, wicked beings. I, I, like, why is it written in the Bible that there is seven heaven? Like, I haven't no, really The Bible never talked about seven heaven. The Bible only talked about the third heaven. That was the only third heaven that was mentioned in the Bible. Apostle Paul made us understand that they are third heaven. But if you keep going in the spirit, there are things you keep understanding. For example, when you focus on the camera, if I tell you what can you see, you say, okay, I see the camera, right? Yeah. Then if I tell you, okay, Look more. What can you see? You can see the name on the camera. Yeah. Then you can see what is behind the camera. You can see the triple stand. But the first time you only saw camera. Yeah. If I keep asking you, what can you see? Ne next, you can't, you start mentioning things behind the camera. What is on the camera? Okay, I think you have battery. I think I'm seeing a cord. I'm seeing, you are seeing more. But the first time, is it that you didn't see them? I saw them. You did Why? Because you didn't major on those things. Yeah. Those, they were not your concern. You only focus on one thing. That is in the long of When Apostle Paul gave us some details, it was the important one he gave to us. What was needed. That's why he said, uh, 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 Apostle Paul said in Second Timothy, if I'm not mistaken, from verse um, chapter 3, from verse 10, he said the scripture is given for reproof, correction, to make a perfect man. So everything that has been written in the scripture, everything, is complete for our edification. But you know that whatever Jesus did on earth, one tenth of them was never written in the scripture. Jesus said in John chapter 21, I think verse 25, the last verse of, uh, of, of, of John, he said, if what Jesus did only after resurrection is written, he said the books in the world, you know how many books is in the world? Millions. He said the books in the world will not be able to contain those which he did. He said, but these are been written is just a basis where we can we can soar upon. So there are a lot of things in the realm of the spirit that you will not understand except you enroll in the school of the spirit. How can you enroll in the school of the spirit when you when you know the way, the truth, and the life? He's the only one that can teach you. You see, a lot of people enter into the realm of the spirit and they become diabolic. There are a lot of so-called Christians that became, they, they were Christian, but there are some things they could not handle in the realm of the spirit and they became diabolic. You see some pastors doing some things that sometimes look fetish. Yes. It wasn't their fault. It was the realm they were taken to, but they could not blend it with the word of God. And I feel most people, I think atheists, Islam, 
they use that against Christians. I, I, that's what I'm trying to explain to some people that, oh, there are some Christians that are not actually like that. Like, they say Christians take alcohol. I know alcohol was actually written in the Bible. God said, um, or Jesus said, give alcohol to those they that want to perish. Sorry. Not actually for those that are sorry. Say for who they want to be perished, give him strong wine. So it, it was for those that want to perish. You see, some people claim Jesus turned water to alcohol. It was not mentioned. Let me say he turned water to, to wine. wine. Are you telling me all wine they are all alcoholic? Yeah. They can't be. If Jesus is against it, he won't do that. If he's against, look at what he said in Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 30 and Proverbs chapter 31. There was a king, a, a queen talking to his uh, her son, which would, which would be the new king called King Lemon. He said, Lemon, he said, do not take strong drink, for it perverts the judgment of man. It will make you not see right and wrong. It will, it, it will deprive you of a lot of things. He said, let him that want to perish take strong drinks. But it's still also we say, drink, but don't be drunk. Look, there's no way like that found in the Bible. It's Seriously? ideology. Seriously? Yes. There is no way the Bible ever said drink and not be drunk. You can never find it in the Bible. These are the ideology. You see, when people start looking for a way to blend their wrong deeds, they will start bringing some things, quoting it in the scripture, like, okay, the Bible says it like this. It was never found in the Bible. You can, you have digital Bible. Go and check for it. There is no way a drink cannot be just found in the Bible. But because we want to so, uh, fulfill our lusty desire, we find a way. Like they will tell you, the Bible says don't lie, but they will tell you their wife lies. There is nothing like wife lie. When you lie, yeah. you lie. Why they are looking for a way to suit their own deeds? That's what man does. Is the is the work of man. Yeah. I always uh, uh, say this. That will never talk more about the seven sins. Never talk more about the fourth, the fifth. But it's only meant for those that have grown in the spirit, fathers of faith. Not everybody. Our people said you are supposed to be teachers of the law by now. I say, but yet you are still babies. Meaning in Christendom we have babies. Those just coming up. We yeah. have sons. We have elders. Then we have fathers. You grow from stage to stage. Don't just stand up today and say, okay, I'll give my life to Christ. Everything is new. Then you start indulging into things that are bigger than you. No. For example, you, if your, your, your parents served idols before, you cannot give your life to Christ today. And tomorrow you are going to destroy idols. You will be dead to it. Yeah. The idols will use less your life. You look as if God never existed. So let's go back to the same time. God, never, God is not living in any heavens. If he's living in heaven, where was he living before he created the heaven? That's the big yes. question. If you are living in a house. In the beginning, example. God created the heaven the and house. the earth. You are living in a house now. Are you telling me you were living in the house before you, before you built the house? No. Yes. You were living so somewhere before you built the house. He isn't part of it. It's true. It's true. So he's not living in heaven. The Bible said he's living above the heaven. He said he, he dwelt in a life unapproachable. So because he knew that nobody can, do you know, even angels have not seen him. Hmm. And just have not seen God. The first time they saw God was when Jesus came to earth. They were shocked. Like, wow, this is the Jesus we're talking about. There are a lot of scriptures of scriptures to, 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 to meet up with other things. He said they desire to know what was in the law. There are a lot of things angels don't know. But we are permitted. Why? We have the life of Christ. Yes. Angels don't have that. No, demons do not have that. So, there are some things we are permitted to see. See, you know, I was talking about Satan is limited. Yes. But to understand, do you know man is not limited? Yeah. I think that is one of the things that actually make the devil angry. In the sense yes. that he's able to, he committed just one sin and he was kicked off. But yes. We keep on committing sins. Because he does not day. have the life of Christ. Yeah. But man has the life. There's a pre Adamic generation before Adam, before our own race. Those people never have the life of God. That's why when you, I don't want to go too deep. But do you know Satan yeah. was a Messiah to a generation? Hmm. He was sent to bring light to a generation, to a race. But those races never had the life of God like we have. Hmm. So when God destroyed that generation with the flood, and God said, let us create man. Satan was not, was not confused. Like, hey, create man. You have been, at least you have, you, you have been creating man and I have been destroying a lot of them. I have been making them go against you. 
But when you hear they say it will have dominion over the earth, Satan say, No, I will rise up above the heavens and put my throne above the throne of God. Then God said, Okay, then I will throw you. Satan revoke was because the allegiance of man. So when when man is doing things, we have the spirit to enter realms. You can enter into different realms because of the life of God in you. That's why Satan cannot operate on earth without a man. He needs a vessel to uh, yeah. use. Satan is not that powerful. He's only wise. Why? He's an experienced man. He's experienced. If Satan is powerful, he should come physically and announce, oh, this is me. Come and do this. No, he can't. Why? This realm is not for him. Though he was made the god of the realm by man, man gave him the, the authority. How did man give him? In Genesis, when, when, he, when he ate the food, God told him not to eat. God came and asked Adam, where, uh, 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 where are you? He said, I'm naked. Okay, you telling me God never knew where he was. The Bible said God knew all things. He's omnipotent, omniscient. I mean, he's yeah. everywhere. He has all power. He sees everything. Now, why was God asking Adam, where are thou? He was not telling you, I'm looking for him. No. When God asks what is your name, he's not, he's not trying to get information. He wants to correct something with your name. So when he was asking Adam, where are thou? He was, he was saying, Adam, I'm not seeing you in your spiritual position. Yes. I'm not seeing you sitting on your throne. Where are you? Light was off. Thank you. It was just like a man holding a light in a dark place. And now everywhere is shining because of the light. No, the light is not there. And you know the man is in that circumference. Yeah. And you're asking, ah, where are you? Not that you are not seeing, you are not knowing that he's there. But because he's not holding his yeah. purpose, his light. So Adam, Adam was like, oh, I ate and I'm naked. Yeah, and someone actually said this. When, as I was talking about this Adam story, like, when um, someone actually chatted me and we were actually deliberating on something, then it was like, are you trying to tell me that the sins of our fathers is going to come or not? And I said yes. That's the truth. Because if actually if you commit sin, it's gonna affect your children. Definitely. That's that's life. Like it's I feel but Muslims feel that when you commit sin, it's actually and you do more good deeds, it's going to pay for off that sin. But I, I we Christian believe that anything you do have a repercussion, mm-hmm. even if you ask for forgiveness. Yes. But are still going to fix that repercussion. Not actually repercussion, consequences. Yes. And I feel when Adam was sent out from the Garden of Eden, if he gave birth, when he gave it to his children, and the sin is not supposed to follow them, that means they're supposed to go back to the Garden of Eden. But we lost that grace, that opportunity. That's why Jesus was sent to die for us, so we can have that kind of intimacy back with God. Thank you. See, you know. Your father can commit a sin and you pay for it when you are not in Christ. There's another vendit that has been written that every man that sinned shall die. He said, no more shall the children pay for the sins of their parents, nor the, the parents for their children. So mm-hmm. when you are not in Christ, whatever your father did dies with him. But if you are not in Christ, you will pay daily for it. That's uh, the answer I can give you to the question. I can tell you yes and no. Yes, in the sense that if you are not in Christ, you will pay daily for it. It's consequences. He said, at least there's a law that says, uh, uh, God says, I will visit the fourth generation, from the first to the fourth generation of the sins of the father. Yes. So, but when Christ did everything, say no, it has been paid. Let every man die for his sin. The wages of sin is death. When you sin, you pay for it. It will be for you. Now, when we sin and we die in Christ Jesus, we don't pay for our sins. Yes, already been paid for. It has been paid. So when you, if you don't know this truth, Satan will make you pay. Yes. Ignorance is the greatest enemy in the church, not the yes. devil. No. So let's forget. Let's leave what the seventh heaven, the this and that. No, that's not our concern, because there are realms that things we can't we can't really handle. Yeah. Because of in in the church we have babies, we have ignorance, or we have people that don't that just hold on to one thing. They don't want to know the truth. That is why. See, I feel there are a lot of babies than the main Christians. Yes. There, there are a lot of Christians that know the right thing. Yeah. For the fact you have accepted Jesus and you know God and you, you know the right thing, but there are some Christians that just choose to do the wrong thing. Hold on to that little thing that they just know. You see, there are some persons that they don't just want to know more. They believe I'm okay here. So when yes. you're teaching those kind of congregants, you have to be very, very careful. Just okay, for example, now, if I tell you. There are people on earth that are non-human. They are more than a human on earth. If you are, if you are not 
uh, intelligent to an extent to say, what are you saying? Everybody are human. Yeah. But of... everybody are not human. Yeah. Angels, 99% of angels, they are like, just like us. They don't have wings. Most angels don't have wings. But you see, when you're talking about angels, you see this frame they give to us, they deceive us. You see angels with some wings, then you see Satan with one. Is a lie. Because God says we created human in our own image. See, and like, yes. you see, you see this world, how they deceive us. You see Satan comes with one head, one horn, one giant, one this thing. That's not Satan. That can never be Satan. Satan is most handsome and most beautiful as you can imagine. Yeah. But you see that image of Jesus with pink lips. <laughs> With nice stripes set and bad set. That's not my Jesus. Yeah. Because Jesus was ugly. It was ugly. Hmm. You didn't hear me. I, I, I said your Jesus was ugly. How? It was not proven. <laughs> it's proven. You can get that in uh, Isaiah 53. It said his form was not to be reckoned with. Was rough. Isaiah was prophesying about his coming. Hmm. Uh, if you want us to dig deep on this, we, we can go far. But when, when Lucifer was described, he said he was a minister of, 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 uh, of music. But I don't think that was actually talking about his face, though. <laughs> he was talking about his appearance, his form. What, what is the meaning of form? Now, take that same word, form, back to Genesis. I would say, and God formed man out of the dust. That was talking about his facial, the physical appearance. That was not talking about the, the spirit. God created man, but God formed man. Man, the dust. Created man, the spirit. But formed man, the dust. Yeah. So when Isaiah was talking about the form, he was talking about the physical. That's why even to today, many Jews do not believe that Jesus was that. Because Jesus, a carpenter. Can you say a carpenter that, is, that can be lacking as me? No. Jesus was not the son of a carpenter. He was a carpenter himself. Yeah. That was like when they asked him, they said, is, he, is he not the carpenter? He was not referred to, is he not the son of the carpenter? Because he, 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 he believed learned, that he has, he has his own handwork. Yeah, he, he was already the doing the work. He didn't just learn it and just keep it. He was yeah, doing he was it. he was doing it. That's, that's he's he supposed to do the work of his father. Yes. Though. And if you read Uzziah, uh, Uzziah chapter 1, I think from verse 17, 18, when after he said, my uh, kingdom will spread through prosperity, then he said, I saw four campeters coming to fray the work that the four horns had destroyed. So who is the four horns? He said they came to destroy Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get that in Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 also. He said the campeters came to fray. So there's a reason why Jesus came through the pathway of the campeters. So that he can understand the physical cap. You know, the physical represent uh, or uh, is a replica of the spirit. spirit yes. If you are if you are in the dream, you are in another realm. Do you know what you see in the physical? You see some of them in the spirit. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dual world. We live in a dual world. That's why we are always advised to fast so that you can adjust your other realm, and adjust your being in the other realm. As you are, as you are fasting here, you also, to, if you want, to be fresh in your other realm. We live in a dual world. So, Jesus had to pass through that, so, uh, that, uh, that pathway of the capital so that he would understand how to fray ordinary wood. So when he understands how to fray ordinary um, furniture, then he will, he, he will translate it into the spirit realm. Just the same when you learn how to cook in the physical, you learn how to prepare things in the, in the spiritual. I know the kind of food I will give you according to your, to your level spiritually. If I'm dealing with you, it's different from if I'm dealing with some, some, with some persons, some viewers, because I know to an extent you are, you, you are more knowledgeable in some things than them. Well, I have learned how to cook. I'm preparing the meal. Yeah. If I'm serving everybody, if the two years is among the, the congregation, I won't give him a, a solid food like I will give to you. But you are all in the congregation. I will have to separate the food. I will give one meat, give one bones, give one hard food differently. But one congregation, one volume yeah. for different set of individuals. So there are a lot of things we need to understand. Let's leave everybody the same table. Understand what is, we, can, we are not be able to, to, to extract what is okay. on earth. We are disturbing ourselves with the heavenly, uh, heavenly beings that is not even our business. The seventh heaven does not do much things on the earth. The, the major things that is done on earth is from the third heaven, the third, the second, and the first. Those are the, the, the most important parts. At least man can access all this one easily. So those are the parts that we must dwell on. 
and understand what is happening. As a Christian, if you, if you are already sitting with Christ, representing God in the third heaven, there is no devil, nothing on earth that can, that, that can hold you down. But because we, we are not permitted or we, are, we, 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 we kind of reduce ourselves, we are not able to assess some things in the third heaven, we are looking for things that, that are not even looking for us. Are you going to tell a beggar, a hungry man, that you know you can sit in the heaven, uh, seventh heaven? If my friend get out of here, I'm looking for food, not seventh heaven. Somebody that's not paid school fees, are you going to mm. go and preach to him? Oh, do you know I can take you to the seventh heaven? So go and do what? Now, I feel, I feel a lot of us are actually losing track of what our main purpose on earth is. Yes. And I feel if if we want to be really, really honest with ourselves, we also search more. Like I see, I feel I love the fact that most of us actually. Or most people now actually believe that there's a God. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people recently that are suffering from depression. I don't know why. Like depression is not supposed to be for anyone. Like I feel it's I feel it's a mindset though. It's it's not just a mindset. Depression one is an event. Hmm. Two is a personality, a spirit. So when the spirit comes upon you, forget it. Even if you check it, cancel. Let everybody count. Let the best counselor counsel you. You will kill yourself as well. I was reading a book actually. I think the power of positive thinking. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that book is it actually shows a lot of things. Like I feel Christianity is actually dated way, way back. Like people have proven it with prayers and <laughs> the book actually transformed me. Like I'm not done with it, but like I've read it on an instant and I feel it I've read it. It's, it's, a, it's a powerful book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of books about the power of the mind. Let me tell you, there are physical things that can affect your mind. Yeah. What you know today is based on your environment. So when somebody comes with another environment, another, I have an atmosphere. If you are in my presence, there are some things you you won't like to do. Why? Because you're in my presence. Not that yeah. you, you really want to just do it. That, that, it's my atmosphere yeah. controlling you. It's that it's always advisable not to always be found in a place that is not good. Like, yeah. it's not too good to your faith. Just as a Christian, you are being found always in the, in, in, in the club. You might not take alcohol, but your system will be building. It will be adjusting. You'll be adjusting. You'll turn to Have you not noticed at times? Maybe you, you hear some wrong music that you don't actually like. But later, uh, maybe when you sit down at home, you start it's, saying, your head is not playing. Why? Yeah. Your subconsciousness is, take, is, is grabbing your environment. That's how depression works. Depression is the spirit. Always, let me tell you, depression is worse than the devil. Yeah, I believe so. devil, The devil only implore them to work. You can cast out the devil. The spirit yeah. of the, the, the depression, you can cast out. But the event, this is with your mind. It's very, very important. So when you are dealing with the spirit of depression, you must be very, very careful. Because anything you say to a encourage the person can be a problem. Yeah. How do you just stop it? Just stand up like, I'm depressed. This life is this. Okay, for example, you're in the church. You're the, the man of God said, greet your neighbor. Tell them you're welcome. Just imagine your neighbor here greeted the black person there. Your neighbor on the other side greeted the black person there. Instantly, you feel irritated. Okay, am, am I not a good neighbor? What, what, yeah. what, why, are they, why are they neglecting me? I think everything is about the mindset, though. Are you getting it? That's how it works. Very, very yeah. terrible. So when you're dealing with depression, you have to understand a lot of things. A lot. If you don't have God, you'll be depressed. Yeah. Because there's a gene that has been discovered in man seek to worship his creator. So when that place is void, something happens. Yeah, attract things that are not supposed to be. Anything can, can just enter. Yeah. Anything. They, 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 at least we understand there's no vacuum in God. On earth, there's no vacuum. Yeah. I feel if, if we want to be honest with ourselves and Okay, let's let, let me say this to Christians and Muslims out there. If you want to be honest, if you want to follow the Bible or the Quran, like I feel the Bible and the Quran is somehow similar. In some there's things. a lot of things that will be taken from the scripture that is found in the Quran. Yeah. But like I feel if we want to be honest and live the life that the Bible asks us to live, we're going to have this life way, way easier. I feel we humans, we, I feel because we don't have limits, or God gave us this ability to do what we want. We have that free will. So we just, we are strange. Like, I, see how this devil of this too. Like, we, we just take it out of limit. Like, 
That's what we, we, we just do, disturb uh, ourselves. There's something yeah. we just allow, just allow, allow it to, 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 to just lie low. See, you know where the problem is coming from? We, um, we forgot that Muslim, Christian, and Judaism, these three, let me call them religion. Do Christianity is not a religion, but let me just, there's a religion part of it. Yeah. You see, these three kind of great religion, they came from one man. I think Abraham. Father Abraham. This theory came from him. So don't expect uh, the, the, the Muslim God sh should not have an atom of truth. Yeah. It will be there. Judaism also have the atom of truth. Christianity, what I tell, what I tell you, is not um, religion. I am not defending or I am not in any argument with anybody. Whatever you want to believe, believe. If you want to believe in Jesus' way, we demonstrate power. That's just my conclusion. So, why I say Christianity is not a religion? Because it's the fulfillment of the law. It's fulfilling what the Jewish law says. We have the Jewish law in our Bible. What is the what covenant? So when Jesus comes, most of them could not believe him. Why? Because Isaiah prophesied it. He said they will see, but they will not understand. They will hear, they cannot perceive. So it has only been prophesied that these people you are going to meet, they have stiff neck. It's only few that will believe. Yeah. Do you know a lot saw Jesus rose, uh, 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 rose different people from the dead, but yet they, they didn't believe it. Even Jesus, you know, he lost a lot of disciples. Yeah. When he told them, You will eat my flesh and drink my blood, they said, Oh, this is a vampire man, we can't follow him. Bible said he lost a lot of disciples and he faced his, his twins. Are you going to leave me? Peter said, Where, where do you have to go? So it has already been prophesied. So you, you, what, what you just need to know is if God is real, or if God is not real, how is this? How is the formation of the heavens? Have you read in, in, in Job? Do you know Job is the first book before uh, Genesis? Job is the first book written before Genesis. The book of Job is way, way years, thousands of years than Genesis. Moses wrote uh, the book of, uh, of Job before he wrote Genesis. So the life in, in the book of Job is a little bit different from the life in Genesis. Now, God was talking to Job in Job chapter 38, downward to 40. He said, do you know where the winds hide? Do you know where the thunder, the house of the thunder? Do you know where the, 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 the winter, the snow? He said, do you know where they reside? He said, do you know the host of heavens? Meaning they were beings in heaven. He said, do you know how the stars give it light? He was talking about different things. That found in the heavenly. So how were this thing created? So everything just exploded and things start formulating. Who is formulating the, the, the formulation? Let me tell you this. This is very controversial, but this is the truth. The word revolution we teach in science is a religion, but they won't tell you the truth. That revolution that that uh, what was this what was it called uh, the father of uh, the revolution? What was his name again? If I can remember, that we were taught in, in science classes. It's typically wrong. It's a religion, but they won't tell you so. They'll tell you it's just science is discovering. But even the nature is said. That would say, if you refuse this man to, to speak, it says stones will speak. Yeah. Who are the stones? Go and check the, 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 the pyramid of Giza. It's talking about Jesus. Go and read about it. It's talking about the, the second coming. It, it talks about the, the, the first coming of Jesus and the second coming. The pyramid Giza. Go and read about it. He's talking about the, the coming of Jesus. So the stones are already speaking. Satan is only just trying to blend the mind of many that are ignorant, that are simple, but we have known the truth. Wow. Guys, I feel end here, guys. Like this video is getting very, very long. Guys, let's like, share, subscribe to my channel, leave your comments in the comment section, guys. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.